This is a very special day. Amen. Tell your neighbor, welcome to the house of the Lord. And we are really honored today. Uh, Mama is here with us. We really want to appreciate God for her life and what God is doing. I can request that uh, maybe he has something to say. Thank you so much, Pastor Leo. Good morning. How are you today? Are we ready for the word of God? Happy Baba's Day. I'll have some good time with you after the service. Only for the Babas. Only for the fathers. Pastor is asking if there's something for them to eat. Yes, there is from Mama. I love you. Time for the word. Thank you so much, Mama. We love you. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Babas, where are you? <laughs> Babas, where are you? Amen. Amen. If you are seated next to a father, can you tell him Happy Father's Day? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we, we thank God for our fathers. They are special in our lives. Amen. And uh, I also want to us to appreciate uh, our father in the ministry. Apostle Joseph Atundumbu. Uh, amen. Yeah, he's our father and we really appreciate him. I just want you to take just a few minutes. Just appreciate God for his life. Just speak a word of blessing in his life. Just speak a word of appreciation for him. Because God is doing great things in his life. Amen. Yeah, just take a moment. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Rikayama shende bol zikata ya kalabol o sike ya kana sike le bol zikana ri seke bol sakata ikemo na shika neke ya kabo sike teria masike le bobo sika Lord we thank you Lord for our Father in the ministry Apostle Ndumu we thank you for his life we thank you because he has been a blessing in our lives we thank Thank you, Jehovah Father, for this Father you've brought him King of Glory. We speak your blessings. We speak your mercies upon his life, oh God. Thank you for the healing in his life, Jehovah God. Thank you for the joy of salvation in his life, oh mighty Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because God he is blessed, O oh Lord, and he shall see the fulfillment of your purposes and your glory in his life because it is you who works in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. We appreciate you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us give a hand clap to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, now let's pray for the word also. Hallelujah. Father, we appreciate you. We adore you. We thank you for this moment that you've given unto us that we may hear your word. Thank you because your word is life. Your word endures forever. And every time you gather your people, Lord, you don't gather them in vain. But you have a word for them, Lord, to speak to them that they may be established in the truth, King of glory. That Jehovah God, they may show forth your praises. The praises of you who has called them out of darkness unto your marvelous light, Lord. Thank you because this morning you are at work in our lives, my Father, 
Even as I speak to you, people, Lord, how I ask that Jesus, you shall have your way. That Jehovah God, even in the demonstration of your spirit and of your power, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the healing upon your people, Jehovah God. Thank you for your move in our lives, Lord. Thank you because we shall never remain the same again. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. We speak healing upon our lives. We speak your bandage and grace repulse kayama nakebo sekete u zikaba yeke nikalabo seterebo bosika masika ya babo sitere yanda mosika laba seke u zike ya kama neteribo sikaya ba sekelebo masikere yanda we give you glory jesus we adore you because there is none like you. You are from generation to generation. It is you, Lord, who works in us, work in us today according to the good pleasure of your will. We adore you, Father. We worship you, Jesus, for there is none like you, Lord. We honor you this morning. We submit to you this morning, Lord, to hear from you. We love your word. We love to be taught of you. We love to know you more. We love to be established in the truth of the gospel, Lord. On our own, we can do nothing, Jehovah God, but because we are in you, because we are in your presence, Father, we shall see the establishment of your word. We shall see the establishment of your purpose as king of glory. Because it has pleased you this morning, Father, that we may eat from your table. We are ready, Lord. Our hearts are ready, Lord. Our hearts are longing for you, Master, in the name of Jesus. How beautiful is your word. How beautiful is your name. How glorious is your word. How glorious is your name. We worship you. We lift our hands to you. We lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. We bow to you. Holy Spirit, uh, take over in this place. Uh, touch every person. Uh, touch every soul. Uh, touch every body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the healing. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just appreciate the Lord with a hand clap. Just appreciate the Lord with a thunderous hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, you amen. That's kidogo. Iyo ni kochini sana. Si unamjua yule mungu na yemtumikia. Si unamjua yule mungu alie kuokoa. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> At the top of your voice, because you know, you know who lives, you know who has saved you, you know who is at work in you. Hallelujah! Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed of the Lord because of uh, his goodness upon my life and upon my family and upon you. Amen. God has uh, given me a word and uh, it's something that God has been speaking. He has been speaking from this pulpit and... Uh, it has pleased the Lord that we may continue to learn about the same thing because <clears throat> God is a God of purpose. Amen. God is a God of?
so God is a God of purpose. And uh, I pray that the Lord may help us even as he speaks to us. We also want to appreciate our online viewers, our online family, wherever you are watching us from. God loves you so much. We also love you. And even as we join together in eating from the Lord, I know you are blessed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, God has put in my heart that I speak about anointing for mission. Anointing for mission. Or you can also say anointing for purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anointing for? Or anointing for? <clears throat> Amen. What is anointing? What is, an, what is this thing called anointing? I know it has been defined in various quarters, but I just want to give a simple definition that anointing basically is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. This is what distinguishes you from an ordinary person. Uh, I was trying to check the meaning of this and I realized that uh, in Hebrew, to anoint means to rub on or to pour on or to smear or to saturate. So, so anointing is, is to, to have the Holy Spirit in your heart. That is anointing. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, the Bible says, that is the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 12, that you don't have to go there. It says, Jesus came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But to those who received him, he gave them power to be called the children of God. Hallelujah. And Galatians 4, 6 says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. So, when, when you come to a point of hearing the gospel, and then believe that Jesus is Lord. Believe that Jesus died and rose again. You get, you get salvation and automatically you become a son. You, 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 you get born again. And in your, getting a bomb, in your getting born again, you automatically receive the spirit of God. Because the spirit of Jesus Christ who dwells in you is what makes you the son of God. So then you are, you are anointed. You, you have the anointing. So every believer in Christ is anointed. Anointed because the spirit is in him. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of John. <clears throat> John, first John chapter 2. And uh, you, you realize Jesus is the son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the son of God. And the Bible says he is the word of God. And the Bible says, and the word became flesh. So Jesus 
became man. Because he was God, but because God had a mission to save mankind, Jesus, the Savior, the Christ, had to be born. And him getting born in the flesh, it took the power of the Holy Spirit for him to be created in the womb of Mary. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that God is one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is one. And when he was in the womb, he was the Spirit Jesus. When he was born, he was the Spirit Jesus because God is Spirit. Jesus is Spirit. God the Father is Spirit and the Holy Spirit is Spirit. So, the Spirit Jesus had a flesh like me and you. And because he is God and God is one, even as he walked on this earth before he started the ministry, he had the Holy Spirit in him. Automatically. Because you, you can never distinguish in terms of uh, uh, presence. God the Father, God, and, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He, they are one with distinct functions, but in terms of presence, because Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father is in me. The Father is in me. And the Bible says, God was in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself. So, God the Father was in Jesus and the Holy Spirit was in Jesus. That's why the Bible says that God anointed Jesus. Have you ever read that? So, as he lived on this earth, he was anointed. Because the spirit of God was in him. Though as a man, but he was anointed. And at some point, he had to be baptized. He had to be baptized of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Meaning, the anointing was in him. That is why you find, even when he was still a child, he could get to the temple. And the, the scribes and the Pharisees could not withstand his wisdom. He could teach them. Because he knew the Father. And the Spirit of God was in him. Hallelujah. But if you read the book of Luke 3, 4, you realize at some point <clears throat> when he went to River Jordan to be baptized, then he got filled of the Holy Spirit. He was baptized with the Spirit of God. That means the Spirit who was in him because it was time for him to be able to start his ministry, the Spirit of God had to come upon him. Hallelujah. That is why if you read Luke 4, it talks of when he went to the temple, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's not because it was not in him. The Spirit was in him, but it came upon him. Because he has anointed me. So it's, so it's not that at the time when the spirit was upon him that he was getting anointed. Hallelujah. He was anointed. But the spirit had to come upon him. Because he has appointed me to preach good news to the poor. To declare the acceptable year of the Lord. 
Amen. So, purpose is from the time of your anointing. It's from the time of your reception of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But for purposes of functioning, for purposes of delivery, for purposes of demonstrating the anointing in you, for purposes of reflecting the God in you, the Spirit has to come upon you. Amen. Because you are anointed for purpose. So for you to be able to fulfill the purpose, you need to be filled of the Holy Spirit. Because fulfilling the purposes and the mission of God takes God. In our own capability, in our own understanding, in our own intellect, we are not in a position to appropriate that which God wants us to appropriate in terms of demonstrating who he is and his praises and his good works and functionality as sons in the kingdom. It is the will of every father that his sons may come to a point whereby they have the right understanding, they have the right judgment to be able to appropriate or to demonstrate or to show forth the purposes of the Father. Hallelujah. And that takes maturity. And this maturity can only be arrived at through the spirit in you who matures you by the word of God. Amen. Okay, let's read uh, First John. First John. That was introduction. First John chapter 2, verse 20. Are you there? But before we read First John, I will read Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 from verse 36 to 39. It says, yeah, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. So it's what I was saying, that Jesus was anointed by God. And after getting anointed by God, in Luke, we won't read that, Luke 4 from 18 to 19, where he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he got anointed, and then the spirit of the Lord was upon him, because he had a purpose. Hallelujah. So because you are anointed, it is the will of the, God, of the Lord Jesus, and it is the will of the Father, that you get filled of the Holy Spirit. It is the will of the Father that you get baptized of the Holy Spirit in order for you to be able to fulfill the mission of God. Amen. 
First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 verse 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Go to 27. 27, 27, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Hallelujah. So, John is saying here that you have the anointing in you. So tell your friend you are anointed. If you have believed in Jesus, you are anointed. Hey, but I'm semi. <laughs> yeah, if they are born again, they are anointed. So the anointing is in you. And that anointing that is in you teaches you all things. Because that anointing is the presence of the Holy Spirit in you, who is your teacher to teach you and to bring you to a place where you are in a position to fulfill the mission of God. John 15. John 15 from verse 1. Yeah, thank you. You are, there. you are there already. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine and my father is a vine dresser. <clears throat> this was Jesus. He was talking to the disciples and he was telling them, I am the true vine. I am the perfect one. I am the holy one. I am the truthful one. I am the Messiah. Amen. Maybe you have seen other vines, but those are fake vines. I am the real vine. Maybe there are some who came in my name and said that they were the Messiah, but those were fake ones. I am the real Messiah. I am the one, the anointed one. And my father is the vine dresser. Another translation says, and my father is the husbandman. And another translation says, and my father is the farmer. Hallelujah. So, I am the planting of the Lord. I have not come here on my own account, but I have come here because I have been sent by the Father. And I'm here to fulfill the purposes of the Father. Because the Father, in his mind and in his purposes, he wanted a vine. He wanted to send somebody. And I am the vine. And because I'm here, I'm here and the Father is in me. So, as you see me, I am the vine. Continue, two. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, let me explain here. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. So, this branch, you will read after that, you will see that this branch that bears not fruit is because it has no capacity. It has no capacity to bear fruit. It is a dry branch. Because the Bible says, that by me all things were created through him and for him. So I have created all men. Hallelujah. I've created all men. 
But because I've created all men, for you to be a fruit that bears fruit, uh, no, for you to be a branch that bears fruit, you have to be given capacity. So these who don't bear fruit, they don't bear fruit because they are dry branches. And this represents the non-believers. Because they have been created by Jesus. Hallelujah. But he says every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So this branch that bears fruit, it bears fruit because it has the capacity to bear fruit. It is a living fruit. I mean, it is a living branch. And this capacity comes from me. Because I am the vine. And uh, if I may explain, the vine, when you talk about Jesus being the vine, is not really what you see, because what you see are the branches. But the real vine, because the Bible also talks of saying, saying it says that we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So, when, when Jesus says the church is the body of Christ, Christ himself is the life see on the outside is the body. But Christ himself is the life of the body. So the true vine is the life of the vine. And what you see are the branches. Because Jesus is spirit. So he says every branch that bears fruit. So this branch has the capacity to bear fruit because it is anointed. This branch who is you and me who have believed have the capacity because they have received the Holy Spirit. And because you have received the Holy Spirit and you can bear fruit. But it is the will of God that you bear much fruit. Not, not little fruit. And because he wants you to bear much fruit, he prunes you. Hallelujah. And the pruning, because God is the Father. He owns, he owns the vine. And he also owns you because you are the branches. But he desires fruit. And because he desires fruit, he's a farmer, he's a, 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 a vine dresser. He, he prunes you to conform to his purpose that you may bear fruit. And this pruning is the pruning by the word and by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So, as believers, we need to be alive to the pruning of the father. Hallelujah. Okay, let's continue. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So he's telling the, the disciples that you are clean. You are, you are the good branches because you have believed in me. And, and, and my word has cleansed you. Okay? So you are clean. You are the living branches. Abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. J just hold on there. So he says, abide in me. So I want to explain there. So he's saying, you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in me. So, so we, 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 we already abide in him because we have believed. And because we have believed, the life of the vine flows through us. So we have the capacity to bear fruit. But then, after there's also another abiding. The abiding is twofold. Because Jesus said that those who the Father has given me, Nobody is able to pluck them out of my hands. 
So you have believed and you abide in him. Nobody is able to pluck you out of the hands of Jesus Christ. So you are born again forever. You are eternally born again. But you believed. Now continue believing. Continue in that path of abiding. Continue to develop this relationship with me that you may know me more and more, that I may reveal and manifest myself to you, that you may get to maturity through the pruning of God and be able to bear much fruit. Because what do we use to prune? Yes. Now, this makasi you're talking about is the word of God. And the Bible says that the, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So, so as we continue to abide, as we continue to delight ourselves in the word of God, as we continue to acknowledge the presence of the anointing in us, that same anointing through the word that we have received is able to shape us so that we may be able to bear much fruit. Continue, please. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So, without... Jesus Christ, who is the foundation of our faith, we cannot bear fruit. Even after believing in him, we need to continue uh, building ourselves up through reading the word, through prayer, through allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. To get us to a level of maturity so that we may bear much fruit. Because in bearing much fruit is where Jesus and where the Father is glorified. Hallelujah. Go to eight. By this is my father, uh, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples, so you will be my disciples. Go to 23 to 27. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they will have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So after Jesus talks about the vine, he also brings them to a point of understanding that these fruits that I want you to bear, you need the help. Amen. Because to bear fruits, basically, is to be in a position to demonstrate who God is in your life. Amen. To be able to demonstrate his love, to be able to demonstrate his power, so that when people see you, they see him. When people see you, they see Jesus. And he's saying, the comforter, just go back there, please. Up, the other one. 
26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So he's telling them that I have told you these things. That you need to bear fruits. And bearing fruit, you, you, only, you only bear because you are the branches. So because I'm a vine, you cannot bear mangoes. <laughs> Amen. You can only bear what? Vines bear what? Grapes. So you can only bear grapes. So you can only bear the, the fruit of the vine. But this bearing fruit can only happen when the helper comes to you and this helper, he will testify of me. This Holy Spirit, when he comes, when he comes, he will testify of me. But how does he testify? Because he has no mouth. So he will use your mouth to testify of me. How will he heal? How will he go and preach the gospel? Because he has no legs. He has no physical legs. He will use your legs. So the spirit of God in us is very much aware of the reason as to why he's here. He's very much aware of the purposes of God. And at times he is in us He's like, because he's God. That is why Paul said, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Walk circumspectly and walk properly, not as unwise, but as wise. Redeeming the time. So, so he, he wants us to come to a place where we have an understanding that we have the Holy Spirit in us who wants to testify. And we allow him to testify. So how do we allow him to testify? Because testifying is the bearing of fruits. Witnessing is the bearing of fruits. But this can only happen when we allow him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 5. Can we go there briefly? 16 to 21. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophesies. Do not despise prophecies. So, so he's saying, quench not the spirit. So the spirit of God is in us. But at times we quench him. Because why do we quench him? We quench him because he has an unction. There's, there's something he really wants to do. Amen. But you know, he has no hands. He knows this is the time for this. This is the time for this. And, and him, he wants to push you. But you are seated. So you, you quench him. Ni kama moto una... Amen. So for us to be able to bear fruits, we need to get to a level whereby we, 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 we submit ourselves to the word and to the Holy Spirit so that he's able to do the things he wants to do. Because he has the program. He has the blueprint. 
for your life and for the church and for everybody and for the dispensations of time. He has the program. He knows that he is in you and you are anointed because he's in you for a purpose. But then he cannot force his way. That is why he will continually teach. He will continually try to help you so that you understand, so that you take that step. So that he may be able to do the things that he wants to do because he is here for a mission. There was a dispensation whereby Christ walked on this face of the earth for 33 years. But then he died and rose again and went to heaven and he sent the Holy Spirit to come into the believer for him to be able to do the works that he wants done. But then he knows that we cannot do it on our own because this is spiritual and it can only be done spiritually through the Spirit of God. So what we need to do is not to quench the Spirit but to allow him to function in us. Hallelujah. You know, I was, I was, I was uh, realizing the other day, uh, most of the time, the Holy Spirit is not in a position to manifest the power of God in us because we, we are rigid. We want to be in control. It's, it's like I'm driving, okay? But... I don't know the way. So God has a better plan for me. And he has put the hands of the Holy Spirit on my hands. So I'm, I'm the one who is there. But then he wants me to be easy. Because he will not push me too much. He wants so that when, when he takes, you know, when he swerves, my hands are free. Holding but not rigid so that we can be able to swerve. When he wants to reverse because... There's something you're going to hit there, or you want to change direction, you want to change course. He wants to get you, your heart ready, and able to hear the move of the Spirit, so that you, he turns. So people see you turn, but the turning is from inside by the Spirit of God. But at times, if you hold the steering too tightly, he wants to turn, but then it, it can't, you, you can't turn the car. So, unaenda tu. Lakini siko huko. Then you fail to be fruitful. Because to be fruitful in the eyes of God is to be able to do what is in his heart and mind. It is not what men think. Being prosperous in God is not what you think with your head or with, with, from your experience. It is in the eyes of God. That is why he is the judge. That is why the Bible says that uh, when Jesus comes, there shall be crowns. So there shall be crowns because he is the judge and he knows you are work. He knows whether you are able to be faithful in that which he wanted done. Amen. So, I want to say something. You know, the Bible has told us that the unction is in us. And because the unction is in us, we know all things. That is, we are in a position to know all things. Hallelujah. So when you allow the Spirit in you to lead you, He will lead you in the right way. And He will help you to do that which is supposed to be done. Because the Spirit of God is not a wind. He is a person. He has a personality. He is God and he is Lord. And he knows all things. And he's ancient. He knows more than you. He's wiser than you. And, and he knows what it takes 
for you to mature and to be able to bear fruits. That is why after Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit took him to, to the wilderness. And he fasted 40 days. Hallelujah. And every time, every time, you'll just find Jesus go to the mountain and pray. So the spirit in you knows what is required for you to be able to mature. He knows you need to pray. He knows you need to read the word. He knows you need to fast. Hey, you need Nikoli. Is it true? Huh? Because, you know, things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. They are caused to happen. And they happen after we take a step as we are led of the Spirit, as we are moved of the Spirit. So, at times, God, through the Holy Spirit, will quicken you to pray. And the, the Spirit in you will help you to love prayer. At times, he tells you to pray, but you, you quench him. You don't want to pray. But do you know, in the place of prayer, is where the pruning takes place. In the pray, place of reading the word is where the pruning takes place. At times, we want big things, we speak big things, but we speak them, but we uh, have no capacity for those big things. And you think they'll just happen. You know, because God is a miracle worker. Yes, you want to raise the dead. Fine, it is in the word. But it should be a manifestation from inside. Through time in prayer, where God, through the Spirit, is in a, is in a position to mold you to what he wants you to become, so that you can raise the dead. So that you can preach the gospel. But you quench him. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants you to fast, but you have so many excuses. Hey, ni takonda. Na unoni. But then let me, let, me, let me tell you, because I feel I need to tell you this. If you want, if you are serious about fulfilling the purposes of, purposes of God, and you don't love the word, you don't love prayer, you don't love fasting, forget Forget. Forget. I tell you the truth. It's not that when you fast, you are manipulating God. But it is a way of humbling yourself. And releasing yourself. Because you, you, your flesh has what it wants. But it must be subdued. So it is subdued in prayer. It is subdued in fasting. It is subdued as you read the word. Because that is when the pruning will take place to mature you. By the way, there are some levels. I say this with all humility. There are some levels you can never get to unless you fast and pray. And I'm not saying you manipulate God. But the truth of the matter in my Little years in salvation, I have come to learn if Jesus fasted and prayed, if the apostles fasted and prayed, we must fast and pray. So there is an order of things because as you pray, as you fast, as you take time alone in that chamber, you know at times we go to pray because we are praying for food. <laughs> But I'm talking about that time where you're not in a hurry. You're like, Holy Spirit, just take control. Just lead me the way you want. You want to just help me to worship. Just help me to read the word. Just help me to commune with, with you. you. You set aside like one hour, two hours, and, and you are alone. And there's nobody else. It's just you and God. 
and you, you, you've set your mind, maybe you've fasted, and you're like, now I'm here. That is when you, you, the, the Spirit really speaks to you at Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, individual level, and really, really, really develops in you that tenacity to fulfill the purposes of God. Hallelujah. So you must love prayer. You must love prayer. <laughs> if you don't love prayer, I advise you, you must love prayer. Even if you don't know how to pray, start praying. Ask your neighbor, when is the last time you fasted? <laughs> Ask them, did you fast this week? Okay. Ask them, did you fast last week? Okay, ask them, did you fast last month? Ask them, have you fasted this year? Now, a real big one, have you ever fasted? Have you, have you, have you ever fasted? Have, have you ever fasted? Have you ever fasted? Because the flesh is telling you, Utakonda. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know why the Spirit is emphasizing this. But it is important. Because we, some of us don't have understanding of spiritual matters and how God works. Fast even if it's a day. Don't have to fast 40 days like Jesus. It's a day. Start with Miss Lunch. Miss Lunch. Like, cancel you. <laughs> Domino, how are you? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> you. You're dead. Mwambea pana, wacha ni leo na fast. So, you kuku, wacha yueka tu lakini kesho. I know I'm helping somebody. The pruning, tell them the pruning. It's not easy to be pruned. Okay, hata kama naona kimaliza hapo pia hiyo naona ni sawa. Nafikiri hiyo point imeenda home. Home! Home! Rebo sikaya. Home. <laughs> yeah, pray, 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 pray. Pray, people, pray. By the way, God is telling us to pray. Seriously. Watch ile ya kuombea omena. Seriously. So when let's come here, let's pray. Two hours. Some of us. We want to come 30 minutes, I'm 15 minutes to wait. No. If it's because of work, we will understand. By the times I know some of you, you fear. No, that is the devil and your body. Lying to you. Don't worry. God is gracious to you. He will help you. Just come early. Come early. Come. If you're able, come by six. Pray. Ukichoka, nyosha tu mikono. Sema tu asante bwana, asante bwana, asante. Watu nafikiri unaomba in tongue lakini unaomba asante bwana, asante. Even if it's a million times. Asante bwana, asante bwana, asante. That is very powerful by the way. You will never realize unaona umeongeza nyingine hapo mbele. Because he teaches you all things. He teaches you, he teaches you how to pray. He teaches you how to read the word. He gives you understanding. Because you have the anointing. Amen. Amen. And you need to allow him. Because to be filled of the Holy Spirit, to be baptized of the Holy Spirit, I realized the other day, it is because sometimes we don't get filled because we are quenching him. That's why you realize when, when, when uh, Peter was preaching, some people, got, as they believed, they got filled immediately. It was because of the position of their hearts. Their hearts were just open. And the spirit was like, oh, this, this person. Double portion. 
And some of us are fearful because you really care about what other people will say when you are filled of the Holy Spirit. It is a good thing. Amen. And the mission that you have, God wants you to accomplish it because you will, you utatua mahesabu. <laughs> Sometimes I get scared. Mahesabu. Wow. Utatua mahesabu. Because God has given you everything. He has given you his spirit. The greatest blessing. That was why God told Abraham in the book of Genesis 15 that I am your greatest reward. So he has given you himself. He has given you the spirit. The thing that you need the most. And Jesus is in you. The true vine. So it is impossible for you not to bear fruit. So if you don't bear fruit, it's not because the anointing is not there. It is because you have suppressed and quenched the anointing. You have refused to submit to the spirit. You have refused. Hey, Leon, come, I'm not teaching. I'm preaching. My wife, someone else, hey, when you mali, mama, ni mobi, that means it's Jewish. But I talk it too. <laughs> By the way, are you a teacher or a preacher? I don't know. Okay, I know, but... I'm still learning. <laughs> so am I, am I preaching or am I teaching now? <laughs> Hallelujah. I've written so many things. And I think... The Holy Spirit uh, has led me rightly. I know, not that I think, I know. Something, so many things I had written here. Let's, let's go to Philippians. That might be my last verse because time is up. I had written how many scriptures? Hey, many. <laughs> many, many. <laughs> it's okay. Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Go to 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So Paul is saying, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let your mind be transformed by the word of God so that your thinking is in line with the heart of God. So that you think what Jesus thinks. So that you do what Jesus do, does. So that you work what Jesus works. So that you have a, a view that corresponds to the view of God. Because although Jesus was God, but he humbled himself. Uh -huh. Next. He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man. Now, this is what you need to do because you are a man. See this. 
So Jesus was God, but he was made flesh. So alipojua tu. Mwambie mwanzo alipojua tu yeye ni mwanadamu. Akanyenyekea. Sasa wewe ni mwanadamu. Na kwa sababu wewe ni mwanadamu, Mungu ni roho. Na kwa sababu yeye ni roho, ni yeye akuongoze na akuelekeze ili ufanye mapenzi yake na ataweza kukuelekeza ukinyenyekea. So Jesus was God but because he found himself as a man willingly of course because he said I have this commandment have I received of the father I lay my life willingly and I am also able to take it up So so hum- humbleness is a willingness because of understanding now because you have the understanding you need to humble yourself to the spirit of God and to the word of God and then you will be exalted because Jesus after humbling himself up to the point of the cross God exalted himself I mean God exalted him So when you humble yourself to the spirit and to the word of God Now God exalts you how does he exalt you He exalts you because he exalts you to the point whereby you you live like Christ because the identity is in you but living up to the identity is something different so the exaltation here he helps you to live up to the identity of Christ and heal the sick and prosper amen 12 as i finish was it 12 yeah have you have always been in my prayer? but now much more in my other work out your own salvation with fear and trembling so he's saying you are you are saved hallelujah however now manifest this salvation manifest this salvation with reverence knowing that you are accountable to someone the one who has given his resources you are accountable to him so as you preach preach in humility as you serve serve in humility with fear and trembling that is what it means 13 for it is god who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure For it is God who works in you both to will. What is to will? For you to be willing to do. But now this willing to do is a process. It is a byproduct of pruning. It is a byproduct of pruning. So he must prune you and transform your mind so that now you are able to be willing because willing here is willing in the sense of uh, knowing the will of god and there's a day i said here it's like when we say the the rubber missed the road the tire missed the road so your heart is willing it it miss the heart of god So now you are willing because you've been transformed. A work has been done in your life, in your prayer, in your fasting, in your reading the word. So he works in you, he prunes you to be willing. So that you can be able to do his good pleasure, to be able to bear fruits because that is his, his will. That is the good pleasure of God. That is the good pleasure of the vine dresser to bear much not little fruit much fruits 
But it is a process of submitting to the word of God, of submitting to the Holy Spirit, not quenching the Holy Spirit, letting him lead you into the deeper waters. Amen. 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 Anyway, God bless you so much. Amen. Mbona mnaka kama unataka niendelee? Time in Asia, so what do we do? Anyway, we thank God, we thank God. Let's rise up, please. Ningekuwa ni mwimbaji ningesema ni finya lakini si mwimbaji. Si mmoja alijaribu kuimba kwamba bwana Gilbert hujui kuimba. Kasema basi. Sasa situvutu tena. Anyway, that's on a lighter note. Can we have the praise and worship team here, please? Just lead us in a worship song. We we just uh, worship God for a few minutes. Thank you. 
Just express your gratitude to him. Just let that voice talk to him. Let that voice talk to him. There's no one you need more than him. There's no one we need more than him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just yield to the Holy Ghost. We give you praise, precious Father. Hallelujah, precious Father. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, precious Holy Ghost. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit upon our flesh.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just bow your head wherever you are. I have just one word to say to you in line with what we have heard today. Everything you so much desire starts with your humility of submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. It starts with humility. It starts with saying once and for all, I am not leading my life again. I am going to lead as I am, live my life as I am led. There are many who hear the gospel and up to now, majority have never submitted themselves to Jesus. A good number of people live a mixed and double life. You, make, you live a confusing life and you know it's so true and you know it's not making any sense to you. You're not making pro progress. Others are living outside Jesus, attending church. They are not in Jesus. You're not born again. Nothing can begin until you submit yourself to the will of God. Submitting yourself to the will of God is the greatest decision you can ever make. It's the boldest decision. It's the wisest decision according to God's standards. When a man says, I want Jesus, and they receive Jesus in their lives, that's the wisest man that day. That's the wisest person that particular me in that particular meeting. Because the heavens recognizes that man has come to the light and they have believed in Jesus. Maybe you have been coming here, or maybe you're watching online. And this is a decision you've never made. You, you've never made. You are fearful of people around you. You're fearful about just what you don't realize. It's a time to make a decision for Jesus. Anybody who has never received Jesus, they would like to make that decision to come to Jesus. Let me see by a show of your hand in Jesus' name. You've never believed in Jesus, seriously committed yourself to Jesus. You want to make that decision today. Can I see your hand in Jesus' name? The greatest decision of all decisions. Let me see if you're there in Jesus' name. Okay, if you are all born again. I'm an, I'm an saying, Lord Jesus, and we are doing this honorably before God. We are responding to the word. You're saying to, to your heart and to yourself, I'm submitting myself to Jesus more so that I may learn from him. Lift up your hand. We are going to pray. I'm submitting myself to Jesus from this day more. Lift up your hand. You don't look at you, anybody around you. There's no business of anyone. If that's your prayer, lift up those hands to, to the Lord right now. And as, 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 as just Jackson leads, play that music one more time. Just take your minute and talk to the Lord and tell him, Lord Jesus, from today, mark the day today, the same way you mark the day of your salvation. These are decisions. Life is a series of decisions that you make. You are not going to make any forward movement until these decisions are made. You're telling the Lord, Lord, I'm submitting myself and humbling myself to the leading of the Holy Ghost. I know I need to get to that place of prayer. 
I know I need to get, get to that place of fasting. I need to get to that place where I draw closer to you and I'm allowing you to prune my life, transform my life. Please do not be lied to. Don't be deceived. The flesh and the devil are the greatest enemy of your life. But as you yield to the Lord and make that honest prayer to him, to him and saying, Lord, this day, mark this day in my life, I'm taking steps and serious steps to yield to you, to pray, to be in every meeting, to be everywhere I need to grow and to allow you to prune my life and set me aflame for your will. Just let's lift up your voice and pray. Just commit that prayer to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone lifting up their hands to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the stage that we are in as a church. Thank you, Lord, for the lives of your people and our lives that you have set and drawn to yourself so graciously and lovingly. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that the Spirit of the Lord will grant your people the courage and the boldness, oh Lord, to depart and to take the steps of faith and move. Take that difficult step of submitting fully to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help each one of us, Lord. Help each one of us. I pray that the spirit of grace, the spirit of enablement, the power of the Holy Ghost will be upon each one of us. will not be drawn back, Lord, to perdition. But we will move forward. We will step out by faith. I pray that the energy of the Holy Ghost will be upon your people. As they yield to you, Lord, as they make that decision today to just bring forward and to yield to you and to humble ourselves to you. May there be a great change in each one of their lives. Father, I pray for them in the name of Jesus. I pray for us in Jesus' name. That in this place, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will burn in our hearts like never before. There will be a surge of the Spirit of God. And this congregation, Lord, will produce fruits everywhere we go. By the hands and the hearts of your people. Lord, I thank you. I praise you, mighty Lord. Lift up your hands now, everyone in the house today. Lift up your hands by faith. Let's all lift up our hands above our heads. Lift them above our heads together in Jesus' name. Lord, may you grant these hands lifted to you. A fresh and new beginning. Grant these people who are reaching out to you, dear Father, by the help of the Holy Ghost, that they will move from the stage they are to a new stage. They will see more than they have seen before. They will believe more than they have believed before. By the help of the Holy Ghost. You are the ones who wills in us both to do. Who works in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Cause those hearts to be under the grip of the Holy Spirit. The Lord as they yield to you. There will be great changes. If you believe the Lord has heard your prayer. And has blessed you with this special blessing. Give him a clap in Jesus name. Give him a good clap and celebration somebody. In the name of Jesus, express your gratitude to him. Don't hold back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We may be seated for we may be seated for a minute. I love when I'm listening to anointed preaching, like I've been listening today. I love when I'm listening to anybody sharing, singing, leading, announcing, or giving any speech but led somebody, a man of the spirit. The church is a spiritual entity. And when you speak, you talk in the spirit, either laughing, loud, quiet, singing, anything, there is life in there. Tell your neighbor, I start with humility. Can I tell you where the struggle, look at me straight. Don't, don't, can I tell you where the struggles are and where they will be broken? The moment you break free from that incitement of the enemy where he tells you it can happen anyhow. He has said something very powerful. That's my punchline for today. And I want you to tell your neighbor, powerful punchline for today. He has said something very powerful. If you don't devote yourself to prayer, to the word, and to fasting, it will not happen. 
This flesh we have, yours, not mine, yours, yours and yours. I have mine, you have yours. This flesh we have is the greatest hindrance to the things of the spirit. Because this is what happens. You just, the flesh wants to keep you in the earthly realm. Where you are fearful, where you are worried, where you are not bold, where you cannot do the things of the spirit. And the only way to do the things of the spirit is to submit the flesh to the authority of the spirit. And that's the decision of the believer. The only thing God can ever do for you is believe for you. He has died for you. He has forgiven your sins. He can't believe for you. He can't come, he can't come to the service for you. And he cannot pray for you. He can teach you to pray. So, it is a solid decision of a believer. Your life looks like your decisions to yield to the Lord. Your life is a sum total of the decisions, yielding decisions. Thank God for the men you are running in here on Friday for prayer. I am telling you, those are the greatest decisions you can ever make in life. Please, I challenge you in Jesus' name. We have two hours of prayer on Friday. And from June, from July 5th, July 5th, 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 July 5th, July 12th, July 19th, July 26th, the entire month of July, we will do our prayers outside here and we'll have invited the entire city to come. I don't, I don't know why you're not saying amen, but God bless you. We will invite everybody. If only you come, that is the will of God. That is enough. We will have every member of the church here on Friday, July 5th, July 12th, July, the entire month of July. And please, pick the month of July as your great month of, just begin to say to yourself, begin to just increase your gear, spiritual gear. Praise the Lord. And begin to just, just tell yourself, my business is not as big as my revelation. My career, my everything, my time with every other thing. Do everything you can to join the move of God. Listen to this. And I'm going to let the announcer come and finish. I will not come back here. Let me say the announcement right now. It's, it's, it's for everyone. Can you write, say July 5th? July 5th. 12th. 12th. 19th. 19th. Every, 26th. Every Friday of July. And the Lord will lead from there. We'll, we'll continue up to December. I do not know. Don't think in the flesh. Think in the spirit. Slap your neighbor. Tell them, think in the spirit. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, brothers and sisters? How good will it look as you people invite the entire city and we are out there? We are Because the Lord has spoken to me and I've said this to you. God has set our inheritance in the nations. And so what we are doing and what we are hearing today is encouraging us to set the stage for our mission work. The anointing upon you should be taken to the outside world. So we'll be meeting outside there. I know you know this is the right thing to do. Don't think about how, don't think about where, don't think about, Just bring your body and three other people. I, I, you can just shout a good amen for that. Amen. Our band and our praise and worship will have great worship outside here. We will worship, pray, and especially pray. <laughs> and we will begin to see the miracles of the Lord that the Lord began to do with us since we began to preach outside there. Outside there is not inside there. When we take outside there, we are in obedience to God. Step out. And begin to speak. That's what we are beginning to do. We will lift up our hands all over the ground. Tell your neighbor, don't miss this month. It will be a divining month for our mission work in Kenya and in the nations of the world. And we will run with it until the way the Lord leads us, even if it's until December. I will pray for people. We will, we, will, we will see people slain in the Holy Ghost. You will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You will no longer walk in fear. You will testify for Jesus everywhere. Because the Spirit will anoint you specially. And your mouth will also be set free. Your mouth will be set free. One day you will yell. I assure you in Jesus' name. Some of you talk like you fear people. One day you will yell like Pastor Mlewa. <laughs> Outside there. It is not, it is the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, wakatu unapruniwa, watch I end. Amen. Where does the pruning happen? In prayer? In the word? 
in fellowship and especially in prayer. You read the Holy Ghost. Begin. How many have been in prayer? How many have been in prayer? And when you get to your, the moment, you are in the moment, in the element, you realize the Holy Ghost tells you a lot of stuff about yourself. Let, let me see your hand. Maybe some of you have never prayed it through. You only pray for food, like he's saying, you pray for a man and some things. In prayer, you wonder, how is somebody praying for two hours? You know what? The only way to pray for two hours is to be with a friend who you are talking stories that you are enjoying. No prayer is not telling God to do something. It's communion with God. So we are saying, in prayer, you get pruned. And the moment, listen to this, the moment you are being pruned, let it go. He will talk to you. That is pruning. Let it, some friends, you drop them. They are good, but they're not necessary. Some places you go, they are good places, but you may not need to be there. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. What I'm saying doesn't need to be exciting, but it's the truth. The Lord has chosen us for a big, big mission across the nations of the world. It already began, but to manifest it, we must get in prayer and in tune. We must, must get in the right zone. You get in the right zone, the right zone where the Holy Ghost can move you. And as a church, everybody becomes a minister. Everywhere you are going, you are a flaming spirit of the word of God. That's the will of God. May God grant you this. I felt like telling you those things. Get ready. We'll take you, tell you the plan, how it's going in Jesus' name. If you receive that, can you shout a good amen? amen. God bless you so much. The, who is the announcer? Please come. Oh, can you clap for Deacon Mutua as he come to give the announcements? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm blessed of the word today. Uh, it's a good, good Sunday. And uh, being a Father's Day, uh, uh, we are blessed. Thank you, Pastor Mblewa, for the word. And uh, Pastor Angila. Um, we are going straight to the giving. Tafadhali tujitarisha kwa sadaka zetu. Uh, the ushers can prepare for that, please. Uh, ushers, please, we are waiting on you. Kobasha. And uh, the media team, our, those who have maybe going to give through M-Pesa, our TIL number is 700-1567. 700 Maybe you can display. 700 as Maybe the ushers, you can hurry up because I can hear the kids uh, outside waiting on us too. Mtatuwi aradhi waze ni pole pole tu. But everything is in order. Maybe uh, Katua, you can give us a number as we give our offering. Na 
nafsi yangu ikuimidi kila saa moyo wangu moyo Wanna 